Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. As you may know if you watch the channel, I like many others recently picked up one of the new M1 Mac minis and also like many others, I wasn't impressed with Apple's pricing for storage upgrades. So I'm going to show you four SSD based solutions that are potentially better value. Uh, one of them is from Samsung, three are from Sabrent. And to be honest, I'm not going to waste your time. My favorite is the Sabrent USB 3.2 Gen 2 NVMe enclosure. Um, and that's with their Rocket NVMe SSD inside. Um, and if you stick around with me, I'll explain why. So first things first, let's talk about Apple's pricing. The base machines of all three M1 Macs, that's the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro, they all start with 256 gig of storage, um, which to be honest is not a huge amount. So to move up, we're looking at 200 pounds more for 512 gig, a further 200 pounds for one terabyte, which is 400 pounds extra at this point. And finally, the Mac storage option, two terabytes, which costs a further 400 pounds. So a total of 800 extra for their storage upgrades. And if you're looking to move up to 16 gig of unified memory as well, you're looking at over a thousand pounds of upgrades, which is enough to buy another MacBook Air entirely or a Mac mini with money left over. I guess the one positive of this is the upgrade pricing is consistent across all three machines. And I did personally go for the one terabyte upgrade on the Mac mini, which to be honest was a spare of the moment decision when I was trying to get my pre-order in. Um, and I kind of regret that a little bit. But having said all that, the fastest storage that you're going to get is, inter is the internal storage. And I've been hitting speeds of about 3,112.5 megabytes a second for write and 2,800 for read. As we'll see in the video, we can get most of the way there with some external solutions. Okay, so let's start with a look at the Samsung T5. So the T5 is a classic and it's a favorite among many YouTubers. You've probably seen it in tons of videos in the past. It's got SATA SSD in, so it is limited to 540 megabytes a second, but that's still pretty fast. Um, and it does have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 connector, which has a theoretical limit of about 10 gigabits a second, but obviously you're not going to hit that with the SATA drive. So I generally have been seeing about 360 meg write and 384 read. Um, so this might sound slow compared to the other drives we're going to look at, but you know, in real world performance, that's plenty fast. One thing to note, there have been some murmurings about an issue with uh, the new M1 Max and their USB speeds. Um, so you should be really seeing higher than those 300 meg speeds. Um, and hopefully that gets sorted out in either a firmware update for the T5 or maybe a firmware update for the Mac itself. For most people, I think this drive will strike the right balance between price and performance. It's compact and despite its age, it's still very fast and you can easily edit up to 4K video on it. The Blackmagic speed test does show you might struggle with higher bit rates at 4K, but otherwise it's a great drive and it comes with both a USB-C to USB-C cable and a USB-A to USB-C. So it's nice and flexible and I've had my 250 gig drive for a number of years now and it's been very reliable. And to be honest, it would still be my main external drive, but I just need something larger. There is now a T7 version of this, which has a faster NVMe drive inside, which is rated up to 1050 megabytes a second. And there's also a T7 Touch, which has a fingerprint reader in, um, but I don't really know why you'd spend extra for that. But nevertheless, it's nice that you can. So generally, the one terabyte can be found for about 200 pounds, um, but it's on sale most of the time for about 160, which I think is a pretty good deal for most people. And the nice thing about this one is it's a nice, simple plug and play solution, and it's very fast and very reliable. So like I said, I think it's a good option for most people. So second drive on the list is the Sabrent USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 enclosure. Um, so while the Samsung is more of an all-in-one plug and play enclosure, this is more of a DIY option. Um, so you need a NVMe drive, so I've got the Sabrent Rocket inside. So I had this drive left over from my Hackintosh. Um, it's a very fast drive, so I wanted an enclosure to use it in. And this is a pretty good option. Um, so this lets me do it at USB 3.2 Gen 2 speeds. Um, so one disappointment, it does come with a USB 3.2 Gen 1 cable, um, which limits your speeds a bit. I was still able to get about 600 megabytes a second read and 590-ish on uh, write. Um, so this allows me to connect the drive at USB 3.2 Gen 2 speeds if you have the right cable. Um, but with the Gen 1 cable, I've been getting about 603 megabytes a second read and 589 megabytes Right. So I do like this option as it gives you the flexibility to if you want to upgrade the drive in the future or if you're doing a PC build sometime, you can just take the drive out and use it in that. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, the main disappointment with this is it comes with a Gen 1 cable, which is half the speed, 5 gigabits a second as opposed to 10 gig. So it's a bit annoying and it does hamper the speed a bit. But even with the cable issue, you can edit 4K comfortably off of it and it's a very snappy drive. Um, so if you get a Gen 2 cable, which you can pick up for about £10, then this becomes an extremely speedy drive. Obviously with this one, you'll need an actual, you'll need an NVMe drive, um, which you can get for about £100 to £130 depending on the performance you go for. I got my Sabrent one in a sale for £93. So if you look at adding £35 for the enclosure, that's £128 total, which comes in cheaper than the Samsung T7 and is theoretically as fast if you have the right cables. Um, so yeah, this is, like I said earlier, this is my favourite option and this is the one I'm going to keep. But we do have a few more options if you want to go even faster. So while the first two options are plenty fast for most people, uh, one of the benefits of having a recent Mac and one of the M1 Macs is you get two Thunderbolt ports. And Apple adopted Thunderbolt quite early on and they've included it on most Macs for a long time. They're probably going to include it for a long time to come as USB 4 now incorporates the Thunderbolt 3 standard. 
So it's a pretty future-proof drive to buy. So Thunderbolt 3 does cap out at 40 gigabits a second, and I've been seeing read and write speeds of over a thousand megabytes a second, which is which is rapid to be honest. So this enclosure is very similar to the other Sabrent one, which we looked at earlier, but it is much more expensive at 79.99. So if you pair that with an NVMe drive, like I was saying earlier, the Rocket one, you're looking at about 175 pounds as an outlay, which is not too bad when you look when you consider you get Thunderbolt 3 performance. It's still less than the Samsung, and it's way less than what Apple charged for a one terabyte drive. So this is the closest we've got to so far of the internal speeds of the M1 machines, but we're not quite there um, although thunderbolt 3 is capped at 40 gigabits a second uh, for some strange reason this one's capped at 20 gig a second which probably explains why it's a bit cheaper than other thunderbolt enclosures even still it's a very fast solution and you'll have no problems editing for it one huge flaw which i really dislike is they've, they've added a little notch on the thunderbolt 3 connector which makes it essentially proprietary to be honest this is a deal breaker for me because if you do break the cable you won't be able to use any other device you won't be able to use any other cable with it you'll have to get sabrance one which is to be honest a pain although you do get excellent performance with this enclosure i can't recommend it simply because of that cable We'll now move on to our final drive of the of the video, um, and it's probably the best looking one as well, with a nice matte black. Um, so this is the, another Sabre option, and it's a sort of an all-in-one solution. It's NVMe, it's Thunderbolt 3, and it's no, there's no cap, it's the full 40 gig a second. So while this is the most expensive we've looked at so far at £200, you have to remember that's the same cost at moving from 256 gig to 512 gig on Apple's storage options. And this thing is absolutely rapid. Its read speeds are extremely close to the speeds you'll get out of Apple's internal drive. And while the write speeds are only about half as fast, it's still extremely fast. Um, this drive also has a neat trick of being backwards compatible with USB 3.2 devices at about 900 megabytes a second. Um, so that gives you a nice flexibility of being able to use Thunderbolt on the devices that have it and USB on the ones that don't. And the speeds that you can see, they're stunning basically. Um, the drive does get pretty hot in general use, but I mean, this shouldn't really be a problem as this is just one of the things that happens with NVMe drives. And the benefit of it being aluminium is the heat is spread around quite well. The only other drawback is it does use Sabrent's cheaper key range of NVMe drives, which is supposed, which supposedly has a lower write durability compared to other more expensive drives. I'm not really sure how much of an issue that is, but I guess if you are going to be video editing on it, that's something to check upon. So if you are willing to spend this much, £200, it might be worth looking at the more expensive Rocket Extreme without the Q. Um, this uses traditional TLC flash, so there's, so there's no compromises really with that one. Sabrent advertises speeds of 2,400 megabytes a second for both read and write on that drive, and to be honest, based on my tests for these other drives, I'm inclined to believe them when they claim that. So yeah, as I said, there are other options. There's the aforementioned Sabrent Extreme, which has the more expensive drive, that's £250. Samsung also have an X7, which is Thunderbolt 3 as well, and that's about £300. For me, I think the DIY route with the USB 3.2 enclosure is a sweet spot for most users. You get fast enough speeds to edit most 4K footage off, and you have the flexibility of putting a higher capacity drive in in the future, and still being able to reuse this one. And you can also move the NVMe drive into another computer. The great thing here is all the solutions we looked at are cheaper than upgrading the internal storage for Apple. And some of the Thunderbolt 3 options can almost be as fast. Saving money here and going for the external solutions is great. Because of the fast I.O. available on the Macs, it means you can spend money on other upgrades like going from 8 gigs, 8 gigs of unified memory to 16 gigs which I think is a much better option for a lot of people, especially if you're going to be doing video editing. So let me know what you think. Are you going to go for one of these options or are you just going to go through Apple? Um, or if you do know any alternatives, let me know in the comments um, and I'd love to check those out as well. If you did enjoy the video, give me a like and subscribe. It'd really help me out. I'd love to get to 600 subscribers soon and I'll catch you in the next one.